Good evening, everybody, and you're all very welcome to Lockdown Conversations 2021, Series 2. Uh, I'd like to wish you all a Happy New Year from everybody on the ADCI and from myself. Uh, it's uh, good to be back with you and all in these very, very, very strange times. I hope we are keeping all well and safe. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start off, I suppose, by the same way as we did on, on last season. If what drama group you're from or what festival you're from or what uh, part of the country you're from, if you'd stick a comment in the comments, just uh, say hello to us and um, we'll uh, get back to you later on. Um, tonight, it gives me great pleasure uh, to welcome a very good friend of mine and uh, a very good friend to the ADCI and to amateur drama, a face that's known all over the country for uh, mostly adjudicating. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper than adjudication tonight. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome Walker Ewart. Walker, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. And hello to Drama Land. I am missing you all, as I'm sure you're all missing each other. Great to be here, Paddy, especially at the beginning of the year. Happy New Year to everybody. Yes, and, 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 and the same to you. Um, Walker, I suppose I'll ask with the same, uh, I'll start with the same question that I start with every conversation here on Lockdown Conversations. How did amateur drama or drama as a whole become part of Walker Yurt's life? Well, let me tell you something. It's interesting because I have always talked about being in my first year in primary school. Uh, our, my teacher was Mrs. Irwin, and I thought she was the age of Methuselah because she had grey hair. She, she probably was about 50, I don't know. And one day we were doing our reading and we were doing the Billy Goat Scroll. And she got us out of our desks and she got this long table and she got us to play the Billy Goat Scroll going over. But everybody wanted to be the troll and underneath the table. And Honest to God, that is when I thought, this is mighty, this is great. And I suppose uh, people do it more these days in primary schools. I suppose now it is something that is done, but then it wasn't. And uh, I remember that primary schools didn't do plays or shows in those days. But then I'm going to show you a programme. And this is when it all really started for me. This is really endowed school. It was uh, 1968. The program cost 60, six pence. And uh, I played Sir Oliver Surface. I was uh, 15. Played Sir Oliver Surface in uh, School for Scandal. And the teacher was Bertie Dunbar, who uh, later went, moved down south to Dublin to lecture in English at the Church of Ireland Teacher Training College there. And 50 years later, after this, it was on in the Abbey and he invited me down to go with him to see it. And he says, I've already been to see it, but I just want to come and sit and watch you watching it. And what's lovely for a wee boy from a council house estate out in the middle of the country, it came from 10, 10 houses out in the middle of nowhere. And to and it, it, uh, actually to do rehearsals and things, you have to wait for maybe a couple of hours for a bus to go home and then you had a mile to walk in through the road. And uh, I know my family thought I was stupid and mad and what the hell was I up to? Uh, but I loved it because you were dressed up in, in different clothes. But the thing that amazed me most was people laugh. Yeah. And if, if drama is to do anything, it's to either, it must touch the emotions couldn't believe that people laughed and I just thought that was wonderful. Brilliant. Brilliant. So so um, then did you so through um, college and stuff did you keep involvement and, and then become part of, of the amateur group in Bangor or, or, or where did you go from there? Well it's interesting because I was a languages student and I went to study in Southampton and uh, when I was in Southampton, I'd also to do a year in France. So I have acted in Spanish and I have acted in French. Okay. But let me tell you that you're so busy trying to remember the words and the language that maybe the acting is all that great. My first foray into uh, the festival circuit was 1975. I was studying at Strandmill's Teaching College and we did A Man for All Seasons. And I am still mighty friends with those people still. Uh, after I left college and started to train, I started to produce plays in school myself. 
And I'm very thankful that school allowed me to do that because when I think of the first plays I did, I think, oh my God, they were dreadful, you know. But uh, I was experimenting with the children. And then uh, I joined Abbey Actors here in I Theatre 3. Mm. And I have to say there were a great bunch of people. Some of them had come from Stranmillis. David McCann, for example, was one of the original. And uh, it's great to go on the festival circuit. And it was that scariness of uh, you know, being adjudicated. And that was to go on uh, until I started to adjudicate in 1999. Normally, I would have been out uh, on the circuit as a director, sometimes as an actor. Not always with Bangor Drama Club but sometimes with Rosemary Drama Club, with, with whoever, look, I was a bit of a slut, whoever, <laughs> that, that, that would do it, you know. You go, you go back, um, a, a lot of the people on here, are, a lot of the people in the NEC would, would know uh, Isabel Eaton. Isabel, yes. when, when I first went on the, on the NEC, myself and Isabel were, was the Ulster reps uh, on the NEC, uh, a, a, a great lady, and yourself and Isabel was involved in a production in 1984 that won the Ulster Drama Hey, hey fever. I, I joined Bangor Drama Club and mm. they again, I, I would have to lay everything, knowledge what they did for me because they allowed me to direct. And I worked with people like Isabella as an actress, but it was, it was the most fantastic year because uh, Bangor hadn't won anything for I think 25 years. It was something quite a long time. And we appeared, this old myth that if you appear first night in, in a festival, we appeared on a Monday night. And Hay Fever by Noel Card was on in London at the time with Penelope Keith in it. And uh, James Patrick uh, praises beyond doubt. But then, of course, as you know, you then have to wait until the end. You think, look, he's going to forget all about us. Now, he had told us he'd seen the London production and thought that ours was great. And I'm going to tell you a wee story about sometimes adjudicators see things that you don't see. And Mary Gilday had been the secretary of the Anger Drama Club who asked me to join, and she was a lovely lady, God rest her. And she had got, I just said, Mary, get some flowers to put in those alcoves. And James Patrick got up and he said, and I just love the choice of flowers. I just thought having honesty, that flower called honesty when everything is such, so dishonest. And Mary looked at me and I looked at her and says, I didn't know it was called honesty. I said, look, Mary, we'll take the marks, whatever he gives us for them now. <laughs> so look, if the adjudicator ever tells you something's good, just take it and accept it. That's great. But Isabel, can, can I say to you, I doubt if anybody has, I don't know if many people have co-directed. What we did was we took it night about. And I can honestly say, hand and heart, we never fell out about one single thing. Uh, Isabel is a great lady. She was a joy to work with. And we had a whale of a time. And just to go, it was the Grand Opera House in, in Belfast there that mm -hmm. it took place in. That was 1984. I was back there in 1988 doing Observe the Sons of Ulster, marching towards the song. Oh, wow, yeah. That won the uh, ABF finals as well. It did. The Bangor Drama Club won it. Now, if you read the history of the Opera House, uh, New Point players from Newry were doing the same play. Okay. We were on on Tuesday, they were on on Thursday. And I have to say, it was a member of Bangor Drama Club was asked who won, and they actually said Newry. So it's written down that Newry won, and they didn't. So right. I want to correct you here. Right. But you know, what, what I would say about that is it's a fantastic play, an absolutely fantastic play. And uh, it's strange on a Thursday night to sit and watch people playing your part. And he was actually a French teacher like me. I knew him. Sean, who now directs for, uh, for um, New, Point. New Point. And it was just amazing. And they were doing it slightly differently, but it was all very valid. Yeah. And it, it, it is, that play hasn't been done for a long time. It's a superb play. Yeah, I've I, I, I seen a couple of versions of it. I've seen Liv and Dredd's version of it. Back yes. a few years ago, the Park McIntyre directed. And then I've seen the Abbey version of it there not that long ago. And and two two very different interpretations. Uh, Absolutely. Know, well, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So um a lot a lot of people would know you Walker from from adjudicating and all, but you appeared twice on the Athlone stage. I did. I appeared yeah. twice on the Athlone stage and I appeared for two different groups, which is even better, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
First of all, and, and you know, I tried to look up the dates and I can't remember, but it's it the year that Metamorphosis won, Metamorphosis won, I think, that we were down there with Amadeus and I was with uh, Hollywood players. And uh, I have to say, I was very lucky uh, as an actor to have uh, Carol Stewart from Hollywood Players direct me and to Patricia Irvine from Bangor to direct me because these two ladies know about speech and know about rhythm and know how to talk. And I learned an awful lot from both of them. Uh, it has to be said, Amadeus was a fantastic movie. It was wonderful. It was colourful. I do think we were robbed in that loan, but that's all right. Uh, and I was playing the Bendy, one of the Bendy Telly. The other one was Jim Wollstonecroft, whom some of you would know as a director. Mm. And I have directed Jim. Uh, he's a hard man to direct because let me tell you, he comes to uh, any audition with the lines learned. Uh, and I, I swear to goodness, he'd say, which page? Page 50, right away we go. And that's all very well. But directors know that if you learn it a certain way, you have to then unlearn people the way you want it to be. But it was interesting. And the thing that I then learned from uh, Jim Wilsoncroft was how to work with somebody who tries to upstage you all the time. You'd be standing and suddenly you notice that they'd taken a step up the stage and you thought, I'd better take a step up the stage as well. <laughs> and because we were overlapping each other, uh, and it's a very fast piece, anybody who knows the bit, uh, he would sometimes get things wrong, but he had this facility for making it look as though I had got it wrong. <laughs> and uh, irritating. We are still good friends. We still see yeah. each other regularly. And so then you were, I, I you, were back, you were back with Banger then in a doll's yes, house. A doll's house. And again, it was a lovely production. Mm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry that more groups from the north aren't down at that low more. That's because they need to get better at what they're doing. So I felt very privileged to be there. Little did I know that one day I'd be there adjudicating because as loan for all of us, whoever we are, it's it's the Mecca. And uh, can I say for any adjudicators, uh, Scotland, Wales, uh, England, Ireland, to be asked to do Athlone is just, it's just a wonderful thing to do. The atmosphere is great. And, you know, I was thinking about it and I just thought about uh, the wee lady who makes the tea uh, for all of the groups. And I thought to myself, because that's where I started. That's where I started with in festivals. Uh, my, my wife and I would have made sandwiches. My God, he hated it because he had to get up and make uh, two loads of sandwiches every day, for which we were maybe paid two pounds or something. Yeah. Uh, and, and But I just think of that wee lady, and she is the essence of so many groups and festivals, the ones who make you the wee cup of tea, which is always very well. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's their role. So it was great to be on the stage. Frightening, it has mm -hmm. to be said, absolutely, mm -hmm. because... Uh, there's no point going on. You you realise that the Athlone audiences know what they're talking about. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, so so that's your stage point of view. But then a lot of people might not know here um, that you had Bangor Drama Festival. You were involved with Bangor Drama Festival, and you were ADUF chairman. I was. I, I was a secretary for, I think, about 14 years. I tried to get rid of it. <laughs> it's very hard. Uh, and then I became a chairman. And all I would say is I feel that I can look any committee or any festival or any group in the face, but I've been there and done that. If I can just go back for a minute. I mean, I, I remember at the beginning thinking, you know, some adjudicators, forgive me for saying that are bastards. They're dreadful. You couldn't trust them. And they're just <laughs> because it's your baby. And I, yeah. I go back to adjudicate, uh, 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 producing for uh, Rosemary Drama Club, and we did A Woman of No Importance by Oscar Wilde. I love Oscar Wilde. And uh, I remember in one week we did four festivals, and we did um, two nights, a break, and two nights. Mm. I'm talking about going from Enniskill, which is at the bottom of Northern Ireland, up to Ballymoney, and then over to Derry. So we, we travelled a lot, and our results were a second, a tenth, a second, and a tenth. And I thought to myself, now look, I know as a director that there might be, it mightn't be a great show, but by the heavens, I do not know how it got tenth. Yeah. And basically, and it would have been adjudicators who in those days would have been revered, who I don't think would have believed, they believed that their viewpoint was the best viewpoint, therefore, if they didn't like it too bad. And uh, it was disheartening. And, and I feel that early on, I think that the whole system has got better, uh, including the way 
people are adjudicated and you know the way we learn more than just people dismissing your play mm -hmm. but i did uh, then become chairman of aedf which was a mighty honor because you know if you're uh, the chairman of any organization which which, belong, which is something that you believe in, and I believe so much in the festival circuit. Mm. Uh, it's interesting because at that time we put two different marking schemes, and that was uh, very difficult. Billy Knott was just coming to the end of his chairmanship in ADCI. Tom Hanley was about to start, and I worked with both men, and uh, we, 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 we got some things that we made sure with the same marking scheme. I remember Billy, God love him, and if he's listening, I'm sorry to have to tell him, but uh, you know, he, he, he liked the thought, and I was very prepared that, you know, the two chairmen should be seen publicly. And I remember I was working for the inspectors at the time, so it was easy enough, but he phoned me up and he said that RTE are about to sponsor and they're about to have a lunch and could you ever come down to the meeting? And I said, certainly, Billy, when is it? He said, tomorrow. And I said, now, wait a wee minute. <laughs> what has it happened? I got on the phone, I got my work sorted out and I went down and that was the beginning of what I think should always be. Uh, uh, a link between the two. I'm not convinced that it's always been as strong a link, a link as it should be. Mm. But, you know, uh, one should not harm the other. There, there's room for both of us. Oh, yeah. And uh, basically, what, what I love about any um, groups that come from down south, they love to come to the Ulster finals. Uh, they're, they're, I go back to Sun Drive uh, players and, and Una, what's Una, Una Parker. Una Parker, yeah. And she loved coming to the Ulster yeah. final. So at that time it was in the Lyric Theatre. Yeah. And she just thought of it, you know, and she really valued it. And, and I think, uh, did she win one year? I'm not sure she did. But Sun Drive came to us a lot of the time. Yeah. Great. In, so uh, I love that. It wasn't it amazing, like, uh, as an organisation, uh, and it's an all island organisation, and wasn't it amazing how amateur drama stayed strong through, through the troubles and through the tough times? Amateur drama always stayed, stayed, stayed strong. I think that if you go back, and it was only laterally uh, before the troubles ended, there was only ever one, uh, and it was in Larne, it was only one group that were threatened and that was stopped. And what I think has been awful, and, and I get quite emotional about it, the first time I adjudicated an All-Ireland final act was in Ennis, and I begged them from the stage to start and come back to us, because um, it was dreadful. It, it, it's awful that there were two Irelands, even today, as I, I look at the, the, the two jurisdictions dealing in a different way with the pandemic, you think, look, you're not going to dilute your unionism yeah. or strengthen your nationalism by working together for people. And it was great. It, it was marvellous that people could travel wherever. And we went to some places that you would never have gone to in your ordinary day. Yeah, yeah. And you did your play and it was the play was important and it was uh, you were well looked after. And I just think it was it was terrific. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the RUC at that time got the George Cross for you know, all they did. And I just felt that the amateur drama should have been recognised as well because it crossed all barriers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 I agree with you on that one. So how how did you come then to the adjudication process? How did, how did you come I come to be, to... Uh, to be an adjudicator? Well, I have to say that uh, again, I'd mentioned Beth Duffin of AUDF, and 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 she uh, got me a few gigs at uh, you know she, the church's drama league is where we started. This is this is Belfast churches, yeah. And I would have done some young farmers clubs, and then one night I got her a phone call, and I thought it was I was being wound up, and it was from um, Money Glass, which unfortunately doesn't work or it doesn't. Well, more, yeah. 1999, it was Money Glass, I got the phone call that I adjudicate. And I said, you know, I've never adjudicated before. And they said, but oh, that's all right, we, we, we've asked you. And Money Glass is like some of those great country festivals. You know, it didn't start at half eight at night. And uh, if it was Friday, it would be nine o'clock at the time everybody came out of the chapel. And, you know, you would we arrived in Money Glasses, I always would maybe half an hour early, not a soul about. And then suddenly these cars came from everywhere and they were a great audience. But then I have to tell you that everything's a learning experience. 
and it was the 21st of March and it was my wedding anniversary and I had to say you know darling we're not going to celebrate in fact we didn't celebrate for many years after but mm. that time is festival time and off I went to uh, I'm not going to mention the group and but some of them might be listening in to adjudicate the group who were doing the odd couple I, I have to say it was the first time I was and maybe I said too much on stage about what needed to improve. But uh, after that, you used to have a salad tea where you met the group. And I went into the group and I have to be very careful because I'm not going to say the F word out fully, yeah. but it was said very fully. And I walked in to meet the group. And these are people I've been competing against working with them, whatever, and uh, this guy that I knew very well looked me straight in the face and said, F you and F your F in adjudication. <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't know where I'm going to start now. <laughs> and it was a very tense time. Yeah. And I thought I could be out having a dinner with my wife and yeah. maybe I have got this terribly wrong and what am I going to do? It really shook my confidence until I found out that they were last in every festival they went into and I thought, yeah, okay, <laughs> I wasn't as bad as I thought I was. <laughs> but it taught me a lesson. It taught me maybe I was too brusque and too abrupt. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have to learn those things. I was so keen to let them know that I knew what I wanted to say. But mm -hmm. uh, that that was the start of it. And it's interesting because through word of mouth, and then I, I'm going to move on to the Chaircock experience because yeah. what was wonderful was very early on, uh, and it was uh, through um, Mid Ulster Carrick Moore Festival, I was the traveling adjudicator. Yeah. And you know, it's an idea they need to, you all need to think about bringing back. They left one night for the winner of the traveling adjudication. And I found places in County Tyrone I did not even know existed. I was very nervous about, would I ever find them? But let me tell you, mm. you just followed the crowd, you followed the headlights. Mm. And that was a great experience. And of course, I ended up with Sloan Players and Chaircock. Mm. And then the delight fell on my great friend, Anne O'Reilly, and had the courage to invite me down. And that was my first time going over the border to uh, adjudicate. Oh, to adjudicate, yeah. It wasn't, was, my first, it wasn't my last time in Shercock either, as you know. No, 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 no. You were there. We, we actually had you for the All Ireland Confined Finals in 2012, which, which was which was great. It was like, which was well, special. It was because like I was having one of our own adjudicating. <laughs> well, I, I was adjudicating on my 60th birthday, which was absolutely yes. wonderful, if you remember. But that yeah. just for me was the pinnacle of what I wanted to do, to be there mm -hmm. on my 60th birthday. Because most of the festivals, all of the festivals are, sick, are, are the same age. Mm -hmm. uh, including the, the the northern one, uh, yeah. the Ulster final. You know. yeah. yeah. So then, Walker, you went on then to uh, sorry, you adjudicating uh, all over all festivals, both north and south, and you've done all our all the all Ireland finals twice. You've done yes. the British finals twice. Twice, yeah. And the Scottish finals twice. Once. So, so Scottish right, finds only once. Uh, Come on, then, Scotland, just need to book up here and get... And then for an S. <laughs> well, no, but I, I have to tell you, that the exciting thing is that England has just discovered me two years ago. I mean, okay. they, they didn't know I existed. You see, the point is that England will only have Boda adjudicators. And when somebody yeah. took ill, I was asked to go over at the last minute. Mm. So I had to introduce myself as, good evening, everyone. My name's Walker Yurt, and I'm not a member of Boda. Uh, but they've asked me back, so I must be doing okay. Do you know that? You, you must be doing okay. So it's, it, all them all Ireland's that uh, I suppose the, a great achievement to, to 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 get to do the, the confined all Ireland and the open all Ireland and and two one act all Ireland's. Um, I suppose this is catching you on the hop away, but you know we all resonate tonight in amateur drama that that stuck you to your seat as 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 audience members and as directors and as actors and all drama people you know if you ask any drama people on this uh, that's watching this uh, conversation tonight there's nights you know that you'll never forget in amateur drama is there any of them moments in your head <clears throat> there are um a night in november i would have to say in Glenamada. 
Uh, and, and, you know, it was interesting because there was all this fuss about could you have a one man doing it and whatever else. And I suppose what resonated with me was my son was was at that match and, and you, you suddenly realised that this. And, and I know that when it reached the All-Ireland, it, it raised a bit of a fuss because uh, there was a politicised remark made from the stage. And um, I, I, I just thought that, look, we have to, I, I thought that play was done wonderfully well. I, I thought that uh, it was Willie, wasn't it, that did it from, from Calvin? Mm. He, he was yeah. superb. Uh, I mean, Willie Lyons, was not it? Uh, yeah, and from, I, I have, um, from Cork. From yes, Cork. For, well, well, yeah, at least yeah, from yeah, Calvin yeah. originally, but he, he was working yeah, 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 with yeah. them. And uh, I thought it was very brave to do, and it was uh, it, it touched me. Look, you know, and anybody who knows me knows that that I can get very emotional about it, and mm-hmm. I find it hard to walk up onto the stage and not cry yeah, because yeah, yeah. it had got me. I, I mean, and you know, if there's anything about an adjudication, and people can talk about the marking system, the marking system's there, and I believe firmly in it. But uh, it's also, does it get to you? Does it make you really laugh out loud? Mm. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen The Cripple of the Finnish Man uh, quite a lot. Uh, I've seen what, what's the one about the two boys and the, the statues. I've seen uh, um, the Lonesome West. West yeah, Lonesome yeah. West is the one I've adjudicated most left, I tell you. Could almost, okay. If they forgot their lines, I think I could get up and do it myself. But, you know, you, you want to enjoy it and it's, it's lovely and, and you want to uh, move. But can I say, I mean, I just thought when I went to Athlone, it was terrific because mm. it was just so special. And when I was asked the second time, I just couldn't believe it. And it, it is a special, special place. But, you know, I'm going to say something, and it doesn't mean don't ask me to do finals. Do you know what I really love? I love seeing a play early on. Yeah, And I just love to, and I, I remember, God rest Alan Sparling, and I was in Dunbeg, and Alan had uh, brought the rabbit hole, mm-hmm. and he said to his group, before he started, he said, could I just say a word to them before we start, Walker? I want them to know that they're lucky to have you early on, and I'm looking forward to what you have to say. And I just was bewildered by this. I, yeah, I just thought, yeah. isn't that terrific? But I love, I mean, any of you who know me know that I want you to succeed. I will be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I, I just want to get the best out of people. And that was a lovely tribute. And Mary Egan as well, and they would have said that too. And um, I, I love to see plays early on, because then when you when they get through to the final, you just think, my goodness, isn't that absolutely wonderful? Yeah, yeah. And I suppose I want to digress here because there's a weak point about people can want to win too much. Mm-hmm. And there was a very telling moment, and she will know who it is. Her group may not know who it is, and I'm not going to reveal who it is. But um, the group was very disappointed they hadn't won a final. And I was, if you like, sympathizing. And this lady, good actress, turned to me and said, I'll tell you something, Walker. There are groups that appear in festivals and don't even ever win a festival, let alone get through to a final. And they still keep doing it. And, you know, what, what's the point of getting tired? Of course, we all want to win. Mm. But what you've got to remember is, as I was directing school plays, everybody loved the stars. But I knew that that wee guy in the back row, it's killing him to do his part. And that was really good for him to do it. And I thought he was great. And I would say that about anybody bringing on actors. Maybe we can look for tin cups too much, where we need to be thinking about how we're bringing people on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I love Um, to be in early on. I love early festivals. Early early festivals, yeah. Um, Moving to... This is uh, 2020. You were in you were in Rush, of course. Which I was. We, we, I was. we had met you, and you you had a second festival lined up uh, as in it was Shercock. Sure yeah, Shercock right. was next. And, and uh, Leo Leo made his announcement as I was travelling down at eleven o'clock. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, that's it. <laughs> but there so we co- go. So co- co- COVID hit, and I had to turn around the adjudicator and the group. That's and, right. Uh, and, and that was it. And that's where it is. But then Walker, um, the writing competition started. But I want to go back to the start of the writing competition. I want to, to go back a few years because I know this was one of your uh, original ideas. And could you just talk to us a wee bit about 
about about the writing competition and where it originated for and, and the story with that? Well, to, to be honest, I have to put my hands up and say it's not totally original. It is what happens in the UK in the British finals. In the British finals, there are two awards. There's a Geoffrey Whitworth Award for uh, the best play at, at whatever level on the circuit. And they only have three, they only have three uh, various bits anyway, uh, because they've got uh, preliminary uh, semi-finals and through to the finals. And uh, I had noticed one year that there were 13 one-act plays that were really, really good. Well, some of them were really good. Some of them should not have seen the light of day, and that's okay. But people are writing. And I put it to the six and six. I presented them with a paper about how it might work. And the first year it was a pilot scheme and it was successful. And uh, Alice Lynch, who was the winner, still is writing. She sends something in every year, a very good writer. And mm -hmm. Gary Gallen has picked her up and picked her, her plays quite rightly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was interesting because Alice would have said to me herself that after she won that award, people began to notice her rather than just thinking, oh, well, that's her and she writes three plays, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But once she won the award, and that gave me a big thrill because I thought to myself, you know something, it means that it is important to win that award. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's important for us uh, in whatever part of the organisation of, of drama we are to keep thinking, how do we make ourselves relevant? If you're going to look for public funding, and in part of my job as, a, uh, as an inspector, I was dealing with all of those applications. Yeah. You need to make sure there's no point in saying, uh, oh, look, we do this and it's wonderful and we're almost as big as the GAA and whatever else. They want to know facts and figures and what you're working with. Therefore, I thought it was a good thing to recognise the writing. Yeah. As we should be recognising backstage a wee bit more in some festivals rather than just yeah, acting. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. And so oh, yeah. it was great because then uh, DLI and the, the Six and Six, they come up with the idea of then the uh, Anna McCarrig and having the residency there, which I would love myself. No, so that'd be great. Oh, um, I, I think there's a bit missing there because they, they have to then say to those who get the scholarship and, and what do we get out of it? You know, what, what did you do when you were there? You know, mm -hmm. uh, so we had then... Uh, Anne McAtarian, representing uh, DLI, was with me from the very beginning, and it's a, so mm -hmm. stalwart, she's, she's real support. Mm -hmm. And Sean Corcoran was on, and then Trisha Keane replaced him this year. God love her, she hadn't a notion what was ahead of her. <laughs> because we had to take away the criterion. The criterion was um, something that the Six and Six have to think about. The criterion was that it had to appear in the festival circuit in the current year. Mm. And that, I thought as well, was to give them, uh, you know, to help the boost, boost the festival circuit too. Mm -hmm. And um, so this year when we removed that criterion, because of course it didn't work, we had 58 plays. Wow. Now, at the beginning it was great because they came in and ripped some drabs and it was great. And then as it got near October the 14th, here I was sending, uh, here's six plays come in today. Oops, here's four more come in this evening. Oops, yeah. here's two more come in overnight. And I, I have to say for the three of us, if, if it's hard work, and we met the same time scale as we would normally with a nine or 10 yeah. in a good year. We yeah. met the same time scale. And I have to say to those two ladies, and Trisha in, in particular, because she was new and she, she was in touch to keep asking how things were going. She was so enthusiastic, it was tremendous. Yeah. Some of the writing is wonderful. Where are we at the minute? Well, I know the award ceremony is yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. But I've actually started to help some of them edit their plays because I think it's worth editing. For example, there was one lady who sent me this email to say she thought it was terribly professionally organised and it was lovely. And even though I got nowhere, I thought it was a great experience. And I had to go back and say, but we loved your play. Look at the, uh, each one of those 52 authors got uh, feedback, personal feedback from myself on mm -hmm. every play. Mm -hmm. And I had to go back there and say, look, look at this play because, you know, it, it is worth doing it. some beautiful stuff. There's a young lady who wrote a play about homelessness. And again, she just needs to look at the ending. And it is wonderful. 
that, that we've got some tremendous writers. I have to say it's great. But I've got a challenge for everybody. I don't know, are, are we going to end up soon? Uh, uh, before we go, I have a wee challenge for everybody. What's happening at the minute is I have got in touch with 32 people mm -hmm. whose plays are worth our performance ready. I will be doing a compendium of the number of people in it, the setting, what the story is about, and the DLI will be getting that list so that, new, that producers wanting new plays can uh, mm -hmm. access them and find out a play that would suit them. There's some wonderful stuff out there. Uh, and, and I mean, uh, even the winner, uh, Irene Kelleher, says, mm. I know she wants to produce that herself uh, professionally, but she has said she would just love an amateur group to pick it up and direct it as well. She, she would love mm. to go and see an amateur group doing it. It's about a lighthouse, lighthouse keeper, a young girl, wonderful play. It was just stunning. Another place, number two, The Centipede by Tom Houlihan who is down around Tralee. Great play, and I think that'll become a, those two will become a classic, there's no doubt about it. You know, once people have the courage. Uh, sometimes we go for the safe play. I think I worry about uh, people who get plays that think that adjudicators will like. And I'll go back again to my early years. Doing summer theatre was fantastic. Doing summer theatre comedy taught me so much about timing and acting. And Sam Cree is our local writer up here who died okay. many years ago. And I know that West Cork have done a lot of his plays. Some of you are beginning to, to discover them. Superb plays that will work anywhere. If you don't have them rolling in the aisles with that, I think. So it, it's, um, it's fascinating. The, 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 the playwrights are there, there are writing groups there, and we haven't reached them all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if it's our duty to reach them all, but we need to at some stage make sure that we acknowledge some very fine writing, very fine writing. And to encourage Something. writing as much as anything else. Yeah, and to encourage maybe directors out there of, of, of groups, um, you know, including my own group and and other groups to take the plunge with a new play, you know, with a new piece of, piece of writing and, and bring it to the stage and let us see it too. Well, come on, all you Cavan men, let me tell you that they, they, these, these plays were marked blind mm -hmm. and there are three playwrights mm -hmm. in the five that were highly recommended or six maybe, and they are from Mullach mm -hmm. in County Cavan. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. they appear with Mullach players. And I'm telling you, yeah. you're thinking to yourself, if you have that richness there, my yeah. goodness, it, 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 get, get to them, use it. I know all the people out there involved in groups and 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 involved in plays and and guys like myself that direct and I've been adjudicated by you on, on on many occasions and I've seen you adjudicated on many occasions. So I I know what works for Walker. Or well, I think I know what works for Walker, but. Uh, people out there will be asking me what what ticks the boxes. I asked this to Paula the night later on too. What ticks the boxes for Walker as an adjudicator? Well, it's a bit like when I was an inspector in school and people used to say, what are you looking for? And the first thing that I'm looking for is enjoyment. And I'm looking for enjoyment for the audience, but I'm also looking for if the people on stage are secure and enjoying what they are doing, that enjoyment will come down to us. And I, I want to be drawn into it and almost not know that they're acting. And the only way you can do that is by choosing a play which suits all of your cast rather than, and I'm sorry, but there are some groups do this, if the two or three strong people and they build their play around that and maybe push other people in, I think you have to step back and say, look, maybe the strong person could play a, a minor part at the moment, but you might find somebody else who is as good as... Uh, the better part Absolutely. and uh, if you like that's my challenge to the groups um you now have or you will have by the end of this month you will have a compendium of plays that are new that have never been done some of them one or two have been but that have never been done and are worth doing and they will work and i'll tell you why because uh banger drama club is very good at, at uh you know the English voice, if you like, but we're not very good at something like Alan Akeburn, which he writes in a very specific way, this rhythm. Mm -hmm. But, you mm -hmm. know, these, all these plays that have been in this play competition, and remember we've had uh, a winner and two runners-up 
or three previous years. Yeah. All of those plays are written in your voice. Yeah. And you don't have to, and you will recognize the characters. It's funny because next week I'm, I'm talking to uh, the Glasgow Division in, in Scotland, Scotland Community Drama, yeah. and I've chosen to write about uh, how to be a character that will cross borders. Yeah. And you have to really find something that chimes with you. And I would encourage you all, uh, again, once this arrives, her Valerie McGill will end up with an awful lot of work that you won't mind. But once this arrives with you to uh, read some of the plays, there's a, there's a man, and I don't know whether he's young or old, but he wrote this zany play and it needed a bit of work. And he may be listening in tonight because I told him to do so. And I, Trish, Trish and I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it is way out there. It's unbelievably way out there. Okay. And uh, we loved it. And I, I worked for about a day on it and sent it back to him and said, look, this is the way I think. Cut some of this. This is what I think you should do. And I would love to see that play direct. Not going to say which one it is. You'll have to find it out. All, all I would say is there's a submarine involved, so you'll have to build a submarine. Well, you there know? you go. There you go, folks. You've got the tip here. Go Absolutely. Go Absolutely. Second. Walker, on behalf of myself and Lady C, I thank you very much for coming on to Lockdown Conversations. Thank it you. Was an absolute pleasure to have you. Great. And here's me thought I wouldn't be able to fill the space, you know, the time. Actually, me and you could talk all night. We could. <laughs> Folks, uh, thank you very much for joining us this week. Next week for Series 2, Episode 2, we have the lovely Breda Hayes all the way from Ballycoggly Players in County Wexford. She was twice winner of the confined uh, finals and we've breed on with us next week. Folks, that was Walker Yurt. I'm Paddy Farley. This is Lockdown Conversations from uh, all the way from Shelkirk and from Bangor. Good night.